Hello, today I'm going to show you how to paint sea stacks. And it's got a very cool sky. So I've got three different colours just to stir together and a large brush. And the sky is a foil for the rocks. And then underneath I'm just adding a different colour. I'll put a list of the colours in the description. But on an island you get quite different skies at times because there's a lot of reflected light. I'm going to start with the rock stacks that have actually got grass on top. The grass seems to be wherever there's a little ledge. I just put in the shape, very thin paint, and I don't want it too thick, so I'm just going to let it down a little. So I'm not going to put anything else in on those for the moment. I'm going to move on to the next rock, which is slightly paler, so I'm just going to add some water to the mix. Gently pop it in. So it's a base coat just to cover the white paper. And now where there's anything that looks slightly lighter, I'm just going to add a lick of Naples yellow. You could use yellow ochre if you haven't got Naples yellow. And just gently put in some warm areas. And this one's got a light ridge, so I can put that in. And again, on the taller one that's slightly lighter, I can just add a little bit of yellow. And because the paper's still wet, that will send the paint back a little bit. Just give a slight highlight. Now the next step is to clean the brush off and dry because I don't want to add too much moisture and use the cooler brown, which seems to show where the rocks are wet. And the same over here, just take the darker shade around the contour of the rock. And there's some at the waterline, but and then this one's got a huge area that's dark. And going back to the far one, this one's almost got a little ledge on the bottom. So I'll put the ledge in in a different colour. And this one's quite similar at the bottom as well, just a tiny bit. And this one's got lots. And there's a gap because there's a wave splashy up there that I can put in last of all. I'm not using latex today. You can use latex for the white. But I'll show you how to do it without it because I know not all of you would have a jar of latex. And coming back to this one, they've all got the same little ledge. If you're going to paint anything like this, if you can, it's worth checking the tides. And some little ones I can just put in that are just breaking the, the waves slightly. And then because they're much shorter, they haven't really got as much colour change. Now I'm going to go to the far right hand side and just add a little bit of Naples yellow to the homemade grey because it's more protected and it's much lighter. I'm just going to water the paint down a little. Just claim the space. I've just added a few more nooks and crannies of where I can see other rocks. And there's a lot of dark rock that's either wet or just in shadow. I'm going to add a little bit of Payne's Grey as well just to make it extra dark. It's a summer's day, so I don't want it to be sort of devoid of light, but it just needs some careful shadows. With a little brush, I can just do the jagged edges of the rock. So just go around very gently. Now, before it dries completely, I'm going to add some homemade grey. And I've got blue one side of the grey and yellow ochre the other so that I can just tint it as I want to. Just changes the colour balance slightly. And I'm coming down. And I want it a bit lighter, so I'm just going to drop in some yellow ochre and that will send the grey back a little bit give it some highlights. I'm just going to let the paint down a little bit, make it a bit lighter. And I'm going to leave that one as it is and move on to a very slender stack. It's got a lot of contours and different colours and it's got a chunky bit up the middle. You just try and look for anything that's a different colour. 
and I'm finding more nooks and crannies as I go and it's very dark this side because it's in shadow from the next rock so I'm doing up and down strokes there's another rock in the water you discover more as you go along and then taking the brush up and then on top it's very light grey so I'm going to use the yellow ochre in with the grey mix and then change to the blue mix just to give it some contrast everyone is different you just have to keep looking and finding more so going back to the homemade grey again very thin starting at the bottom working up and then changing to the yellow ochre version we shall send the paint back a little bit just put some dark in on the two rocks that are almost touching it's got very brown tidal line there's a gap in the middle here because the water's splashing up which is why it's good to put some of the water in as you go rather than leave it to the end because you can find otherwise that you've missed things and i'm going to stop there and put some c in so that i've got the tones building up nicely i've got some pencil lines which are quite helpful for sorting out the white water as i'm not using latex and i'm going to go back in with the number three brush and do sideways strokes because that's the way the water seems to be going so there's a gap at the back where there's white water just lipping up against the rock and there's a couple of darker lines in it which i can come back and put in and the, just the sideways strokes it doesn't matter if there's a few gaps in them when there's this much white water and there's a nice blue triangle there that i can put in and it also follows around this little area here and i want to try and make them in line so i'm just going to add a little bit more and then come around keep going sideways again the waves are moving all the time so you've just got to do your best and this is actually curved so it's all rebounding I'll make the curve a bit better coming around that rock a little bit and then to the other side of it let's make the paint a little bit stronger And just leave the odd gap for a bit of white and then the rest of it is all foam until I get down to here and I will break up the foam a little bit when I get further into the painting but I'm just making a start and the idea of making a start is that you can see how the warm rocks are standing up against the cool blue I will put a list of the paints in the description but I've just stirred this blue up over three or four colours And there's a little bit of green that I can see, so I'm going to put that in while I can see it. Clean the brush off and then just merge it back a little bit. Go back to the blue, make it a little bit stronger. Now I've got to find somewhere to end the blue because I don't want to do the whole picture. I was just starting in the middle. So I'm just going to feather it out a little so that I can add more paint to I'm now going to add a little bit more paint to this rock. I've just mixed up a slightly different green. I've added a little bit of Viridian into it. And I'm coming coming down and the marks that I made earlier. Just wherever the grass was hanging on, which in this case seemed to be along the middle where it's more protected. And I'm now going to go back with a very dark colour and do the very find cracks in the rock so I'm going to use number one brush and just put the cracks in I don't have to put every crack in but some of them are quite key to the shape of it and the dark shadows all help make it look three-dimensional so now I've got those in 
going to go back with the homemade grey and a little Naples yellow in it for a change because the rock's nearer so the colours are different. Using a small brush so that I can get round the green and the cracks because it is not flat, it's going in every possible direction. And it's quite dark on the right hand side here. We'll just make it a bit darker. Drop yellow ochre in from the left and it will send the paint back. And there's also a dark slab over here. So I'll put that in and then use the homemade grey just to mix with it. Doing downward strokes because that's the way it seems to be formed. And then back to the homemade grey as I come down. Just adding a little bit of Naples yellow for a change. It's going to be next to the white water, so the darker look, a very nice contrast. Not 100% darkness, light facets. Then it comes back to much lighter grey. So we go around the corner and there's some erosion at the bottom that's quite dark. So I'm going for the very dark colour. And then back to the grey again. Doesn't matter if things merge. When that's dry, I'm moving to the horizon, which is a very rich blue. So I've mixed French ultramarine with a zillion crimson and some viridian. I might need two coats in places just to make it dark enough. Around the rocks very, very carefully. And I'm going to put the white water in I've left pencil marks for the white water just to give me an idea and then I'll put the detail in afterwards so it's worth mixing up a quite a big puddle of paint to do these areas So that you can match the colour. I'm going to go around the white water. There is some blue inside the long curved area I've drawn but I'm just going to go around the edge to start with and then when it gets to the bite out of the rock here there's lots of white water so I've just got to leave a random edge. So what I need to do is just take the brush for a walk leave random areas and then I can work on those afterwards but I've got something down let's put in a few little tickles and I can stop there because it's going off the edge of the page so now go back to the top of the rock Follow the horizon again. It's coming forward around white water here as well. And that's blue all the way down to a pencil line that I've put in there. You can always take it off with your finger or take it back with a flat brush if it's not exactly as you expected. And then there's a diagonal line that comes across. It must be just a current. Just put that in. And 
it doesn't matter if it's a few flakes of white because it is a very blustery day and that just shows how rough the sea is and the conditions are it's making it very very dark and it'll help show the white foam that's around when it hits the rocks I'm now going to get number one brush, same paint that I mixed up earlier, and just go in where there's a few different lines. Just got an odd white line here and there. I'm just going to take the brush for a walk, and go around some of the white lines. They don't necessarily go all the way. And then in between the white lines there's a and it's nearer so there's slightly more detail on the sea it's leaving a suggestion of it and then coming forward where it's a bit stirred up slightly more turquoisey i'm just mixing slightly different ratio of viridian with the blue and i'm now going to add some cobalt turquoise just to show that it's a lively area I'm just going to drop some of the original blue on top of the turquoise just to mute it a little bit. I don't want a sudden change, I want a gradual change. And on this side, it's more like somebody's laid out a rope. And it's just sort of the rebound. And then I'm going to use the cobalt turquoise, I think, because it works fairly well. Just mix it with a little bit of the original blue. And just put a few little dancing waves in and as it comes around the corner it's much darker and there's a curve on it and they're much darker right by the rock and there's a bit here that's really really dark so I'm just going to add some more French ultramarine and drop in the concentrated paint ripples just going across so you just can't see the ones that are further out to sea it's calmer water there and then going into this area here there's a, a few submerged rocks and some water be, almost being sucked back as a straight line and there's lots of lines through here whatever you're doing when you do something like this don't rush to clean the palette I don't want it to look striped, so I'm just going to soften them a little bit. So coming forward, and it's almost a breaking wave there. I'm just going to add a little bit more blue to this to make it stronger again. And there's quite a few dark waves here. I'm just going to pull it down with some water. You just carry on finding more and more detail around the area that's white, and then I can fill in any gaps later that as if there's any blue in there which there probably will be so to make that look effective i need this solid blue so i'm just going to go over all the areas where the brush has skipped over the tooth of the paper lots of spaces where there's water bouncing it's almost bottle green this is in shadow of the rock I've got to find a natural line to bring it back to. So I've got lots of shadow here from the tall rock. And then it changes to less green. So I'll just add some more French ultramarine. Leave gaps for white water. And as it gets nearer the beach, it actually becomes quite turquoise. So I'm just going to use clear water and run it all back now. Not put any more paint down because I need, I need a big colour change. I've got turquoise water up to the beach. So I'm going to put that in so that I can get the tones right. So I'm changing to a number eight brush mixing up lots of the turquoise paint. This is cobalt turquoise and I'm going to tint it, but it's a good starting point. And I'm going to put a lost edge on it. So to start with, the tide mark is purple. 
so I've got to start some distance back so I'm just going to put turquoise line in it's quite transparent paint this it's quite useful and this seems to be turquoise because there's lots of rocks and seaweed there and it goes back quite a way so I can go over the area of some rocks and just show them as dark in a minute coming over to the other side it gets slightly darker which I can tint it with some green so now cleaning the brush off completely I'm just putting in little areas to give a lost edge which makes it more interesting to look at now I'm going to use a clean brush and just wet the front edge because I'm going to mix that with purple in a minute so I want it to just disappear if you haven't got a size 8 brush just use any any bigger brush and at the same at the back I'm just going to lose the edge of it so it just disappears then I can add the next colour when it's dry. This is one of those moments where you've got to stop and let it dry. So I'll just lose the colour. I've just added some blue here because I want to give the shadow of the rock, which is quite dark green. So I'm just going to make up a slightly darker colour and a little bit of brown and just bring the reflection back just with sideways marks as I've done the waves you just start one side and then go back the other side it just makes the water slightly darker which gives a hint of a shadow without being too dominant by leaving areas of white it just looks like the waves are choppy and not solid just claiming the space and I'll put some highlights on when they're dry And they go under the water as well so i'll just stick a little indication of them as a dark space and then put the water over the top i'm just doing it with very thin brown there's a lot of them are covered in seaweed so they look slightly green under the surface which with the brown and the turquoise together works quite well and this rock goes a bit further and some of them have got quite dark line around the bottom and I've got some more that aren't quite so apparent here. I'll just give a hint of them. Keep the brush fairly upright for doing these marks. And then stops about the area of the rock. And then comes forward a long way in the middle. So I'll now go back again with a slightly different mix. And then just fill some of the gaps. So it looks like broken sea. And again, the other side of the lighter streak. There's a lot more dark water. And the start of some waves starting to come in. So there's an odd, much darker, bigger line. And then clean the brush off and use slightly weaker paint. And just put a few lines the waves coming in through the lighter area there so it looks slightly more uniform but it's we're aware that it's a change now coming round to the area that's covered in rocks we've got all sorts of changes of colors so i'm just putting them out to wave shapes so they're all rolling in and different colours in them so I'll go back with some green in between now that the water's dry I'm just going around some of the rocks again just putting in a few more shadows and details with a picture that's got lots of rocks in like this you have to keep mixing and matching and making sure that all the tones are in harmony so that brings it forward from the sea and I can do the same with this one just thin yellow ochre 
and separates it from the one in front. All these things have to be built up in stages. It's not one stroke is a rock. And then just lots of up and down lines to show that there's more happening there. But I can make the waterline a little bit bolder, which I did with a warm brown. Again, going in up and down just to show that it's ragged. The white water will look a lot brighter if it's next to something that's really dark. So I'm now going to use homemade grey with a little bit of blue. And just go over the rocks on this big rock here, big stack. Just make it a bit darker, a little bit of brown. Harmonise everything in. But I'm going to use a warmer green this time. I'm going to mix some chrome yellow with some sap green and a little bit of yellow ochre to soften it. And just slip the green in. Just every now and again. Slightly less than I put in last time because it's just a highlight. As it's closer, it's showing more. I hope you've enjoyed watching my video and that you'll try and find a rock stack to paint near you. This one's on Belle Isle, but I'll put the Latin long on the description for you. Thank you for watching.